So we've got two very lovely people and two very experienced people. We've got Chris Clark, who is here from South Australia for the Under 18 State Championships. And we have Tony Corbell. So I'll leave you with any tables. Thank you. People in the audience that I recognise, like Michael Darcy is here. Um, these people have been connected for the next six years. Hopefully, done well in their eyes in, in giving them some education in post games. I think actually the, the session that um, Wendy and Alan just did actually leads quite into this, and there might be some overlap, but that's, that, that's fine, and I, I, I don't necessarily apologise for that. Um, so, it's interesting. Things have changed in the last, in international basketball in the last six months. There's been a change of um, change of philosophy, I suppose, uh, in that a lot of referees previous to the change were told, and a lot, in particular, a lot of referees from Europe were told they need to manage the game. Okay. What, what, do we, what do we mean by managing the game? What does actually mean? Avoid problems. Avoid problems. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Does that mean to manage the how you approach the players? Sure, yep. Anything else? Just keep the game rolling, like have a good game flow. So sure. Just have a, you know, a hit game. Okay. You've mentioned game flow. If you've got, if you're a referee coach on a game and you've got a couple of referees out there and it's a tough men's game, and where do you want, if you've got a bit of strength, You've got game flow at one end and game control at the other. What do you want that game to be? Right here. Depends on the game, sure. There's, no, there's no, other factors. No, 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 the question assumes that the game is going to be the same type of flow all the way through. Uh, yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So, where would you, as, and let's say we'll go back to you guys when you potentially refereeing the game, and some of you still are, where would you want, as a referee, that game to be on that bit of strength? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You want whatever it's going to be, yeah. whatever they're comfortable yeah. with, yeah. in the same way, then that's what I see it. Sure. Trying okay. to get them to want to lower a bit, want to raise a bit, and try and find some common ground. Sure. Yeah. Having said that, it's probably, your, your position on that bit of strength is going to move mm -hmm. throughout the game. There's going to be times where you need more control. This time, you can let the game flow a little bit. What's happened, and this is a direct result out of recent World Championships, in particular the Men's World Championship in Spain, what they found in the first half of the tournament, so in the preliminary rounds, they, they found that the teams, and the players, and the coaches were controlling the game. Is that a good thing? Exactly. That's right. Exactly. That's right. So what happened was at the end of the preliminary, so after the first two weeks of the tournament, uh, the referee educators and the commissioners basically <coughs> told the remaining referees that remained in the tournament, you get to take control of these games. Now I'll use an example. There was a game in the preliminaries, and I've got a clip of one of them. Um, where, in fact, it was happening with all games, all games that involved Spain. Okay? Who was controlling the game? The players were controlling the game, the coaches were controlling the game, the spectators were controlling the game, as it was a home tournament for Spain. Okay? The administrators, the local organising committee was controlling the game. Okay? That's not their job, it's the referee's job. Okay? So, what they found, in particular, the Spanish games, referees were not taking control of that game. Okay. Previous to this change of philosophy, I suppose, referees wanted to come out of the game with a happy ending. Okay, here the word here the term happy ending. That's gone out the window. Okay. The referees actually need to control the game. Okay, and if one team's not happy at the end, so be it. But the referees are Okay, so that's a change in philosophy that's happened in the last few months. Okay. There's, a, there's a few reasons for that. There's been a change 
at the head of the table with regard to FIBA director of referees. And the guy that's actually now in charge is actually a referee, not a sports administrator. Okay? So that's one of the reasons why there was a change. Okay? And the rest of the two weeks of the tournament worked like clockwork. The games went wrong. Because they came in and set the standard or set the criteria at half time of the tournament. Okay. So what do you mean why they weren't controlled the game? What 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 the things were happening on okay. the game? There was contact that wasn't being called. There was potentially close to being violence on the court that wasn't being called because oh. they wanted the right team to win, the right team being Spain, playing the home tournament, and oh. walk off the game happy. Okay? Not just Spain, <coughs> there were other Europe, in particular European countries um, that were that potentially having the game. Okay? And so they want the philosophy to change, they wanted it to change now. The referees will now control the game, not the players and coaches. So that's a change in philosophy, okay, that we probably just need to get our, um, uh, get our head around. All of you guys have got a vast, have got vast experience, some more than others, but you've all got knowledge of the game. You know how the game is meant to look as a product, okay? And that product, it's a global product, it's like a Big Mac, okay? Big Mac's the same in the United States, as it is in Australia, as it is in the UK, okay? It's the same product, basketball is the same, it needs to be refereed the same. Philosophy needs to be the same. Um, use that knowledge. Some people think that knowledge is power, okay? And knowledge potentially is very powerful. They keep that knowledge to themselves because they think that's powerful to sort of boost their own ego, okay? You as educators need to filter that knowledge out to referees, less experienced educators, players, coaches, teams, administrators. So any little bit of knowledge you gain, use it and, and filter it out and disperse it out so other people can gain that knowledge too. And it'll make a better game if we can do it. Um, It's interesting, I picked up on something that Wendy, Wendy said and Alan said in the, in the earlier session and I've written it, I've wrote it down here as well, is that you might find something in a post game that you want to talk about, okay? You might want to talk about this huge contact situation where there was no call in the middle of the game and you wonder why there was no call. Okay. How are you actually going to deal with that in the post game? Sorry? Ask the question. Ask questions. Okay, so we've got... Um, Susie Bankovic and Lauren Jackson in the middle of the key. That's right, I, I was on a game last night with Susie Bankovic because was actually playing, so she's fresh in my mind. Um, but, we're, and Lauren Jackson was, um, uh, Lauren Jackson, there's huge contact, elbows, both players ended up on the floor. Okay. How are you going to approach that, the referees? What's your, what's your strategy to actually approach that? Sorry, that's what I meant. Ask the referees. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Ask the referees. So how would you pose that question? Um, in the sixth minute in the third quarter. Yep. There seemed to be this melee between Bakovich and Jackson. Yep. What was it that you were, what, what was your take on it? Okay. All right. Before you ask that question, do you have an idea in the back of your mind about why they missed that call? Or did you make a call? Been? You need to make sure that that's yeah. the way you the way you think. Okay, it's no good you going into the post game and saying you missed this call and you not having a reason you think why they missed it. Whether it's mechanics, whether it's rule knowledge, whether it's lack of judgment, incorrect contact criteria, things like that. Okay, so go in and you give sure they missed the call. What's the reason they missed it? And there's the and that's then that's the coaching tip. Okay, if it's a mechanics issue, you can coach it out of mechanics. And I appreciate what um, Wendy was saying about mechanics, in particular at the higher level. Um, if 
if they missed a call as a result of a mechanics, you probably need to definitely need to address that. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, is it a rule knowledge question? Okay. You go back and say, well, okay, what's the rule? Okay. Is it a contact criteria question? And what I mean by contact criteria is what's the level, what's the what's the criteria that you've set on this game that you're actually going to make fair calls as a result of? Is that contact criteria too high or even too low? And we go through how did you set the standard in that game? You've got to be aware you need to come out with um, reasons why they're potentially missed a call or made a call. Or, or, or even, or even correct. To, sorry. Or allow the referees to come to that conclusion. That's right. They, you facilitate the discussion, yeah. and if they don't come to the conclusion, because I've been in post games at the highest level where they haven't come to the conclusion, you've actually got to um, make that decision for them or make that suggestion for them. That's usually the Sure. Uh, exactly. Uh, that's right. <laughs> 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 So, target your feedback at the correct level, okay? So, if I'm on an NBL or an NBL game, I'll target it at their level, or their, the level that I perceive that those referees are at. If you're watching under 18 game this week, you might target it at a little bit lower, lower level. And if you're, watching, uh, if you're um, watching a referees on under 12, under 10, probably targeted at the lower level again, depending on the referee. Okay. And I think that's important, because otherwise you'll lose the referees. If you come out with all this philosophy, and I'm big on game philosophy, but when I'm when I'm referee coaching out on a Friday night and watching on the 12s and you've got a couple of green shirts on the day, the philosophy's lost on them. Okay? They will learn it eventually, but you need to be a bit more black and white with those guys. Okay, so targeted Use of video, uh, we mentioned video before, and at WNBL level now, uh, it is mandated, even though it's not done in some venues, but it is mandated that we now use, and some of you may have done it, use the iPad clipping type thing, okay, and they do it in national championships now as well. That's got good, that's got positive and negatives about it. What Wendy and Alan said, you actually don't get a feel for the game as a result of watching a 10 second or 20 second clip. Okay, you get the, the camera might not pick something up that happened in the backcourt that you want to talk about, that's important to talk about. Um, when this came in, and I first used it at the Under 20s National Championship last year in Perth, where Tom was, um, it's the first time I'd, I'd, I'd used that, the, the iPad to do that. I actually struggled with it in the post game, so it was probably the first half of the tournament, because it took my focus away about what I normally speak about. You know, you've got 20 odd clips in a game, or last night, close to 50 clips in a game. Uh, uh, but um, you end up, if you're not careful, you just end up going through the iPad and saying, good call, bad call, good call, bad call, good call, bad call. And you're not actually talk about it, okay? Because you know you've got a lot of stuff to get through, you don't be there for hours. It comes coming with experience. I've changed my way of doing it a little bit. I won't necessarily show all the clips. Um, I might show two or three where there's, let's say, there's an issue with consistency with charge box situations. I'll show those two or three clips and then discuss why there's inconsistency. Or we'll ask, ask the guys why there's inconsistency. Be careful of using video with referees that, and you'll, and you'll all know them, that will want the video slowed down and showed 15 times at the same clip. Okay, I show it twice, maximum. I'll show it at normal speed, I'll show it slowed down once. And if there's still no consensus, then we put it aside. That's how, that's how I did it, I did it, that's how I did it last time. Um, so, 
Has anyone, anyone got any other experience about using the, the iPad or using clips as part of the post-game discussion? I know Tony would have been through lots of games with it as a referee, and she might want to speak about that afterwards. But as a referee coach, has anyone actually used it? No? Okay. Are we, are, if, are they not using it this week? No? Okay. All right. No, that's, that's fine. Um, it's hard. It's hard. I've been doing it for 12 months now, and I still find it difficult. So, they had all this. Um, they had uh, speaking to 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 Michael Allen in particular last night about what happened in Spain with regard to video review. They had the, they had all set up in every venue this high tech four thousand dollar license computer with hooked up to the TV cameras and stuff like that. First game, it failed. One of the venues. Okay. What did they go back to? They went back to the iPad. They put the little tripod out and used a low-tech iPad thing to do it. Because they, they, that's what the philosophy was at that time for that tournament. They wanted clips made of the game. But, so video isn't the be-all and end-all. There can be technology fail, and it did in one of the venues. I'm not sure which of the venues it was. But I think it was. Yeah, it was Bill Milner was meant to whatever he was wherever he was as the educator of that venue. So, uh, which is probably good for Bill, because Bill's not very technology <laughs> <laughs> um, Just a couple of things, um, with some things from Europe, uh, with regard to post-game type stuff, and we'll go through a little bit more about what happened at the under-18 tournament I went to in Turkey. Um, but Carl Jungerbrand was actually in Australia um, before Christmas, and he ran a couple of sessions in Melbourne, of which I went to one of them. And it's interesting, I thought I'd bring to this group some of the things they, they, they are currently doing in EuroLeague with regard to referee coaching. Referee coaches or referee educators in EuroLeague don't have anything to do with selection of referees for final for finals. Nothing. Okay? What happens is, and this is probably a good thing, and, and whether it can be done in Australia, Australia may not be the right environment to do it because there may not be enough bus or not enough referees or not the quality of games or, or whatever. But what they are doing, and it's the first season that they've done it, is that there'll be one referee educator for a group of five or six or ten referees. That referee educator will see no other group, no other referees outside that group for the season. So they'll travel around to the different venues with those with that group of referees. Why do you think that is a good thing? Consistency. Consistency. Yep. And another relationship, like a trust relationship between the yeah. educator and the referees. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Skills improvement during the week. Yeah. Well, uh, during the week, actually during the season. But yeah. yeah, so yeah, definitely. You'll see improvement for, and, and it's and it's visible improvement because you've actually written down on your last report that such and such is slow or not doesn't recognise their rotation from one side of the court to the other in league. Okay? And you've written that down and you've given some tips about that, about how to fix that, what the what are the triggers to rotate in league. The next game you'll see if they have improved on or the following game or the following game. What happens is the referee the educator will write his report and send it into the league office. The referees uh, have to write a report about their performance in the game um, and have to send that into the league office within 24 hours of their game. Okay? And their report consists of three questions. What did you do well? What improvements can be made for the next game? And what's your action to make those improvements? So the referees answer that question. Yeah. Yeah. They go into there. The teams then write a report on the referees that have to be into the office within within 24 hours or two days, maybe. That group of reports then makes up the criteria for or makes up the finals panel whether they advance into the next round. Okay. So indirectly, the referee coaches have an influence about what they write in the report but they don't directly have an influence. They don't all sit down at a table one afternoon and say, who 
who's going to actually sit on the final analysis. That's the difference between coaching and evaluation, isn't it? That's exactly right. Yeah. And they seem to, the messages coming out of Europe seem to think that is working quite well. I see with that is if there's a breakdown in trust or the relationship between one of the referees and the referee educator you've got for the whole season. That, that's potentially an issue, and there might be circumstances where they can change those, those type of things. I don't know. That's, that's just something that, that, that comes out of, um, that's new, that's come out of Europe. Uh, that's all I've really got to say about post game. Sort of just building on what the other two guys um, were talking about earlier. Any questions? I've got some more stuff later on in the presentation from the FIBA under 18 men's tournament in Turkey, you know, whatever time I'm on again, 3 o'clock or something. Um, and um, also some video stuff that will come with that too. So we'll go through some